what we're looking at here is we're looking at the square root of 1 over 44. Now, what we need to remember is that whenever we have a radical, okay, um, if we've got a composite number inside the radical, so a composite number which is composed of two terms, right, then we can actually break those terms out. So if we've got the square root of some of a times b, so for example, if we've got the square root of 8, 8 is equal to 4 times 2. So we could say that the square root of 8 will be equal to the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. So what we say, using letters, so we can apply it to any numbers, the square root of a times b, no matter what that number is, as long as it's not prime, is equal to the square root of two of its factors. The square root of one factor times the square root of another factor, right? By the same terms, division also works. So the square root of a fraction, a over b, is equal to the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator, okay? So that's the first thing we need to remember, and that's really the rule that you're going to go through all these questions with. Okay, so let's deal with the square root of 1 over 44. And this is a particularly interesting uh, problem because the square root of 1 is equal to 1. So we can actually break out that 1 from the very, very beginning just by saying that is equal to the square root of 1 over the square root of 44. Now, the square root of 1 is something I don't actually need to do anything with anymore. So that's why I put it in black. I'm saying that the square root of 1 is just equal to 1. Okay? The square root of 44, however, is a composite number. Um, and I know that 44 is 4 times 11. So I'm going to use the square root of 4 times the square root of 11. Okay. That works quite nicely. Um, and if I actually break this out a little bit more, I can say that's equal to 1 over the square root of 4 times 1 over the square root of 11. I know 11 is prime, so I know that this second term here is not a term I can do anything with. But this square root of 4 here is something I can do something with. So I'm going to simplify this further to say that it is 1 over 2, 1 half, times the square root of 11. Another way to write this would, of course, be to write it as 1 over 2 times the square root of 11. And this is the our simplest way of doing it, okay? So we didn't actually need this extra breaking out, this part here, okay? We could have just gone from here and just simplified right there, and we would have gone right up there. But it helps to actually see that you can break it up even further just using multiplication rules. So when you are putting this into your answer um, on Khan Academy, it is going to give you uh, options for putting in the, the, the radical sign and so on. 1 over 2 times the square root of 11. I wonder will that work? There we go. Actually, going back to the previous problem there really quickly, um, what I've seen on Khan Academy is it actually gives you a drop-down menu of your options. You have addition, subtraction, multiplication, and you have a fraction option, which looks like that. That would have been the term to choose, so you need to choose that first. It'll give you the option to put a 1 in here. And when you go down the bottom, put in 2. And then choose the x, the, the, the square root of x, and put in 11 inside it. And that will actually work for you. So the next problem is actually the same as the previous one. So to simplify the expression by removing all the factors uh, that are perfect squares inside the radical, again, the iPad's crapped out on me, but here is the problem I'm being given, the square root of 42, okay? Um, 
again using a factor tree or applying the knowledge we actually know where the square root of a times b is equal to the square root of a times the square root of b so we can break up a composite number into two of its factors same way with the uh with a fraction if we take the, the square the square root if we take the square root of a over b that's equal to the square root of a over the square root of b okay so this is just the knowledge that we need to that we need to remember okay remembering that i know that 42 is 6 times 7. all right 42 is 6 times 7. That's, that's, that's pretty straightforward. So I can say this is 6 times 7. The square root of 6 times the square root of 7. And I know this, that the square root of 6 is equal to the square root of 3 times the square root of 2. And of course, I keep I got to bring down my square root of 7. That's already prime. Notice that I have no pairs here. Since I have no pairs here, there is nothing I can take out. So my answer is automatically going to be square root of 42. Okay, I'll bring everything back in together, multiply them all back together again, and that's going to be my answer. So the next problem that I'm given is the square root of 12. Again, square root of a times b is equal to the square root of a times the square root of b, right? And the square root of a over b is equal to the square root of a over the square root of b, right? That's what we need to know, right? In this particular case, the square root of 12 is equal to the square root of 4 times the square root of 3, okay? This is where things start to get interesting because the square root of two, 4 is equal to the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, and the square root of 3 is prime. So, this is where things are interesting. This part here is the square root of 2 squared times the square root of 3. The square root of 2 is something where this square here cancels out the square root. They're the, they're, they're the opposites. They're the inverse of each other. Okay? So because the square root cancels out the square, that means I'm left with a 2 on the outside. And that gives me 2 times the square root of 3. So this is where you use those pairs to pull it out. Okay, remember, if you've got a pair and it's a square, it's square root, you can pull out that number. And that becomes just a multiple of the irrational square root. Um, when you're using cube roots, you need 3 of them. Okay, so remember that fourth roots will need four and so on. So that's that's just something to, to remember going forward. Um, our answer for this would of course be two times the square root of three. I hope that helped a little bit. The main thing to put to, to remember from this particular exercise is these um, these rules right up here. So that's what you should be putting in your notes with a little example of each of them. Um, Remembering that any number, so long as it's not prime, is a composite of two other numbers. And those are the factors that you're going to need to use. If it helps, use a factor tree. That helps a lot also.